Now that we're set up with a real Vagrant file with a real box, we can actually turn this thing on and start seeing what it does. Before we do though, let's clean this up and review. So we have the start of our configuration, the end of our configuration. We are covering individually those five items inside the configuration. Uh, right now, we're just covering box. We'll go through all these independently. So first thing is, let's put a comment here, box settings. So that's all my box settings, which is really simple. We're just saying load up the Precise64 Linux box. Now you're probably wondering, how does this Vagrant file, how's this Vagrant file gonna know to load this box to VirtualBox if the provider is commented out down here? Uh, that's because VirtualBox is the default. So technically, I could just start it right now and it will know and load everything to VirtualBox. But just for sake of everybody keeping their sanity, let's um, let's just manually put this in here blank so that uh, even though it's already set, it would be set by the default. You can see the syntax is a little bit different. We'll cover it. But now our Vagrant file absolutely knows to load this to VirtualBox. All right. Well, let's open up VirtualBox and you never do anything from inside VirtualBox. You always communicate through Vagrant commands, which look like this. They are, there's like a million of these. So let's open, if you run Vagrant dash help, you can see there's all these different options that go way farther than what we're gonna cover. We will show you the main ones though. So I'm gonna clear that out and run Vagrant up. This is how you start the box. If you've never, or you start your Vagrant setup, and what you'll see here is this command is gonna tie that precise 64 to Vagrant. If you never ran this command before, it's gotta download this box first to your local machine. Mine's already here stored in cache, so it is not required. So yours might take like five minutes for the first round, depending on how fast your internet connection is. But once it's, once it's up, we now have mounted here an Ubuntu Precise64 Linux to our virtual environment, which is cool. So you can see technically I could delete it, I could power it off here, but I never wanna do that. I'm just, I just have this up so we can see it. You always communicate through the command line. And so now I'm gonna run a, the next command you should know, which is Vagrant Destroy, where Pretty self-explanatory. Do you want to destroy your machine? Yes, I do. And it completely deletes it. Now that that ran, I'm going to reboot my machine again. And I know we'll have to wait for it again, but I wanted to show you how that was removed with Vagrant Destroy. The next command I want to show you would be a more practical approach, which is you only really want to do destroy when you're done with the project completely. The, the command that you would normally run would be vagrant suspend. And if you look over here, it paused the current state of the machine. Wherever it stood, whatever process was running, it just paused it in its current state. And if I wanna boot it back up or unpause it, I just run vagrant up. It's gonna rerun all the, um, it's gonna rerun all the things it needs to do to boot it up. And after that runs, let's give it a second. After that runs, our machine's back online. The other option beyond suspending the current state, which is just like freezing it in time, is halt, which is the equivalent of saying power it off. So you can see if you were watching here on what the labels were, the last one said, didn't say powered off, it said was paused or something like that. But regardless, if it's paused or halted, we're gonna run Vagrant up to boot it back up. And as that's running, the only other command you should probably know that I won't do is Vagrant reload, which just reboots the machine. So if anything weird happens, just run Vagrant reload and maybe it could, uh, if like, it will reboot the machine fresh. All right, so how do we access this box? If we run Vagrant SSH, check this out. We're now 
inside of the Precise 64 box. So now if we wanted to navigate around, we could see what's inside this base install of Linux. And if we wanted to install stuff, we could install stuff. It's all pretty neat. Like uh, we're essentially, we essentially have our own web server almost set up here. Like for example, if I wanted, if I was on this weird Windows lockdown system that allowed Vagrant but didn't allow Git to be installed on my uh, computer, I could technically, I could install Git inside of my box here. And yes, we'll install it just for a proof of concept. And now I can run Git from inside of my box if I wanted to. That can work with any Linux package you could possibly think of. So I'm gonna exit and leave the box and now I'm back on my desktop. And it, just to show you, we'll do ssh-config and that will show you settings for connecting to your box here in terms of SSH. So if you wanted to, you could do like with whatever, with whatever way you do normal SSH, you could do Vagrant at 127, port number 222, or whatever the, uh, or whatever the settings are, it's all here. So that's how Vagrant boxes work, it's pretty cool. In the next lesson, we'll dive in a little bit more into providers, and then we'll start going into the, the even deeper with networking and file syncing. So to show you how you can actually do development.